so two things i just want to make sure before we get started one is uh, so you are able to see the screen right that is the first thing so are you able to see the screen okay yeah. you should say or no <laughs> that's how i can because this is an online program so we need to make sure we are more collaborative and interactive okay so the screen is visible for everyone lakshmi khanna sharmila yes it is visible okay is my voice okay is my voice is audible to everyone yes yes okay perfect cool so let's get started uh so today uh we are going to start with uh the road map and uh, the overall uh, program and uh, the different models that we have in the program and the duration okay so let's start one by one okay so total duration of this program is 30 hours i think most of you know about this right and uh, we have uh, totally sorry uh so we have uh, six models Sorry, seven models. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's go one by one. What all the models we have? So model one. Model one is more about introduction to. devops okay so first of all we will understand what is sdlc software development life cycle what are all the different methodologies that we had so we had uh, waterfall agile <coughs> and we are going to discuss about what are all the uh, pros and cons of both waterfall and agile and why what are all the pains we have uh, we had with waterfall and agile that leads to devops so we are going to talk about that also okay so that will about devops so first of all we will understand what all the existing sdlc model in that we'll talk about waterfall agile i think most of you have worked on any one of this model maybe waterfall or agile and then we will be talking about the uh, uh cons that we have with waterfall and agile and how we are solving those problem with devops clear any questions no okay and then when we started with devops we'll talk about what is devops why devops how we are going to fill in the gaps that we had with waterfall and agile and what are all the uh components components we have a in devops and what are all the tools that we need to use in order to adapt devops and how to start adapt devops okay so these are all the topics that we are going to discuss in model 1 so that's why we are calling this model as a introduction to devops clear any questions on model 1 what all the topics that we are going to cover no no okay guys uh, one second questions in model 1 no question we are fine no question okay thank you model 2 in model 2 we are going to talk about source code management
sorry guys uh, model 2 in model 2 uh, we are going to talk about source code management okay so we have different type of source code management uh, i think i need to take this window Are you going to share this, uh, whatever you are typing in that document uh, or a presentation towards the end of the session, after the, after the session is over, are you going to share it on a daily basis? Uh, this is are a whiteboard, you... this is like a blackboard we have, we used to have, but I have a PPT that I'm going to share. Okay. Okay. So we are talking about uh, source code management. So we have uh, different uh, source code uh, management tools so we have git uh, we have svn we have tfs right so we have different uh, source code management tools right in this we are going to talk about git in our program right so first one thing we need to understand why we need to talk about source code management right so in model one we have talked about uh, tools right so when we say we have a devops model in our project or in our uh, program then we need to adapt the tools that is required for devops implementation so git in the sense source code management is one of the tools to have devops in place so that's why we are going to talk about source code management in that we have different type of uh, source code management we have uh, git svn uh, tfs <coughs> okay and then uh, so these are the uh, we have even mercurial these are freeware that we can download and install on our system uh, so SVN is free, TFS comes with uh, Microsoft. So, but in our program, we are going to choose a, a tool that is going to be freeware and which is predominantly used in most of the DevOps model, which is Git. Git, Git is an open source and free version uh, that we can utilize uh, to manage our source code repository. And if you take Mercurial, which is uh, having trial version, but we need to pay for that. But most of the companies, so uh, here I want to highlight one thing. So we are uh, having source code management, right? So in order to manage source code, we need to use any one of these tools. So in our program, how we are covering these tools is, which tool is being predominantly used in most of the companies? So like 80% or 90%, that's how we are selecting the tools, uh, which is going to be talked in our program, clear? So I think most of you uh, have, like how many of you are working in um, uh, Bitbucket as your uh, uh, code repo? Any of you heard about Bitbucket? No, I did not hear. This is Rashmi Ganesh. Uh, maybe you may. Okay, so any of you hear about SVN, TFS, Mercurial? Yeah, yes, SVN, but this is the first time we are here. Okay, so, so typically people uh, or organization may use Git or SVN or TFS, any one of these tools to manage their source code. For DevOps, you need to use one of the tools, okay, source management tool. Most of the companies are migrating to Bitbucket, which is a super set of Git. Uh, if you know Git, Bitbucket is more like inherited from the uh, Git. So in our program, we are going to talk about Git. So I will talk also more. Bitbucket is also a freeware? Yeah, so uh, we have two things. One is uh, trial version, free with limited version, and then paid version. OK? And once we get familiar with one of these tools, like Git, 
the other tools can also be i mean will also run in the same way right more or less in the same uh, same fashion as real tfs material will there be any uh, difference in their uh, way of uh, uh, functioning yes so there are two things okay when you are talking about uh, source code management source code management one is a uh, cds centralized version control system and the other one is distributed version control system so in centralized version control system we have this uh, scn and then tfs in distributed version control system we have git git bucket etc okay <clears throat> so when source code management was started they initially started using centralized version control system and we have some flaws with uh, the centralized version control system so that's why we migrated to distributed version control system if we are material planning to adopt material does not fall under any of these two categories sorry the other sorry? one material does not fall under yeah. any of these categories cvcs or dvcs distributed as material come under this distributed version control system okay is that make sense okay guys please be more interactive that's how because this online program we are not in person so we should uh, you know be more interactive and be, at least you should say yes or no so that's how i can be uh, you know kind of aware that you understand or not okay so if we are planning to adopt uh, devops we need to use source code management for that we need to use any one of these tool uh, but if we are going with devops we should use the tool that falls under distributed version control system that is we may use git or bitbucket or mercurial so any one of the distributed version control system okay so in our program we are going to talk about git so when you are talking about git we are going to talk about uh, different functionalities and different uh, uh, technology that we have with git like how to do a clone so first we will talk about the architecture and then we will talk about key components and then we'll talk about different operations like we'll talk about clone we'll talk about fetch we'll talk about uh, push we'll talk about pull we'll talk about merge we'll talk about stash so these are all the different uh, technology that we are going to use in git clear and then finally we will talk about a uh, pull request and then branching strategy clear so these are the topics that we are going to discuss under the model uh, git which falls under model 2 which is source code management source code management any questions just a minute i'm just noting down so don't uh, uh, yeah okay just a minute uh this is being a uh, video recorded so you don't need to worry so once we are done with this session so you will get a video recording i got a chat let me open the chat message Cool. Shall we move on? <clears throat> so you mentioned uh, point number six and point number nine. Both mm -hmm. seem to be the same, or are you mentioned twice, or is it different? No, a uh, pull is totally different from pull request. PR is a pull request. Pull is pulling the information from remote to the local.
Okay. Is that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can understand. We'll understand uh, when I mean in due course. I think yeah. Model three. So in model three, uh, we are going to talk about a continuous integration tool. In this program, we'll be talking about some of the key uh, terminologies that I will be covering in model one. I missed that to specify. So we'll be talking about continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous testing, continuous monitoring. Okay, continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous testing, continuous monitoring. So this is the key strategy or key uh, technology that we have with DevOps. Okay, so for continuous integration, we'll, in model three, we are going to talk about the One second, I'm not, I don't know, for some reason, I'm not able to select this, okay. Let me erase this. Okay. Model three. Model three is more about continuous integration, which is CI. Okay, in uh, continuous integration, we'll be uh, talking about, so we have different continuous integration tool, okay? So we have Jenkins, we have uh, Team City, Bamboo. So these are different tools that we can use to implement the continuous integration. Uh, most of the companies uh, are using Jenkins and then some of the companies are using Team City and few companies are using Bamboo. But most of the companies are using Jenkins, which is open source and which is a powerful tool, which have an option to integrate with the different uh, systems. Okay, so that's why in our program, we are going to talk about Jenkins. Okay, so, for continuous integration, we are going to use Jenkins. Any questions? Whose product is that, Jenkins? Sorry? <clears throat> Jenkins is an open source. Initially, it was developed by Sun Microsystem to manage uh, continuous integration for Java-based application. Then once it is bought by uh, Oracle, they made it uh, Actually, uh, they, they call, uh, in, uh, okay, let me give a uh, little bit idea. So this was developed by Sun Microsystem. They initially called this as Hudson, which is a continuous integration tool for uh, Java based app. After Oracle bought my, uh, Sun Microsystem, they took the source code of Hudson and they made some changes on top of it and they call it as Jenkins. And Jenkins is open source, which is free to use. Clear? Yeah. But we are going to talk more in detail, just get an uh, idea. Don't uh, think more in detail. We'll talk more in detail about uh, Jenkins in model three. Okay. So in Jenkins, we'll talk about, first of all, we'll talk about uh, what uh, what is continuous integration and uh, how we are going to use Jenkins to enable continuous integration. And then we'll talk about how to create different jobs. And then we'll talk about uh, tools that we have in Jenkins. 
and then we will talk about uh, uh, different uh, system interaction say for example uh, how to define notification how we can build a pipeline how to integrate a uh, automation testing so these are all the topics that will be covered under the uh, Jenkins and we'll talk about uh, how we can measure the uh, code quality and then uh, we'll talk about uh, how to do a automated deployment okay and then we'll talk about uh, um, how to uh, we talked about testing code quality automated deployment and then we'll talk about uh, how to uh, dip, uh, so here we talked about jobs right we'll talk about uh, different types of jobs also different types of jobs so when I am talking about jobs, which is nothing but how to define a, a continuous integration job for a project. So the project might be for Windows, uh, .NET, or it might be for a Java-based web or uh, standalone application, or it may be for a PHP-based application, or it, or it may be for a mobile application. So whatever project that we are using, how to define a continuous integration uh, job for that. So that will be covered in the Jenkins. And this is, this is not a technology dependent, right? It, it works with Java, .NET or whatever, even Oracle database uh, or mainframe. It's a platform independent. It will support any kind of project which is developed using any platform on any operating system. Okay, that's why uh, most of the companies are trying to leverage Jenkins because of this, uh, you know, language neutral and platform neutral. And what about performance testing? Because uh, once we introduce, we when we try to introduce a new code into the new deployment, uh, into the production environment, sometimes it may affect the existing, the performance of the uh, application. So would that be done as part of this automation testing, like code quality, automated deployment, automation testing? Performance testing is also included as part of this? Yeah, so when we are talking about performance, there are different different stuff uh, right so when you talk about performance we talk about application and we will talk about where we deploy the application meaning the infrastructure so we have application infrastructure infrastructure in the sense hardware and uh, softwares and then when we talk about application the application may interact with the database so database so, so there are different parameters right so we have application and we have application server and we have application dependent services and we have hardware, software. So a lot of components are involved in it. So are you talking about the performance of an application on, or overall components? No, I see uh, performance of the application. Suppose uh, I introduce a new change and uh, suppose before introducing a change, suppose I query based on some employee ID. If, I'm, if, it, if it is taking uh, say uh, uh, maybe two seconds time to retrieve the details of the employee. Now, once the change is introduced uh, uh, along with, I mean, as part of this uh, Jenkins automated, automated deployment, uh, maybe there is some uh, index not created in the database or some indexing problem or for whatever reasons, if I query the, using, if I query using employee ID, if, the, if it is now taking say five seconds or six seconds, it means the performance is hit there because of the new change introduced. So b even before we introduce a new change, you should, uh, tell us that the performance might take a hit and I mean, how do we know, how do we measure uh, so that we can take uh, steps proactively? I think uh, you are from a database background and- uh, No, 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 I think in general, right? This is a general UI from UI or uh, even not from, yeah, even if it's- Right, right, right. It's a general, right. general thing, like uh, we are introducing correct, correct. a new thing, so performance might get hit at times. That is a frequent, uh, maybe, uh, Sharmila can add because she is from testing background. She might be knowing it better. But I'm just throwing up an idea like, uh, will can we do any performance related testing also as well? Because 
it's a common thing it's a very common thing that performance might get yeah, hit and yeah, yeah. Yeah. we need I, to roll I, back I these things yeah i, I got your question uh, it so happens that we need to roll back the change and we have to go back to the previous version in production and then fix the issue whatever and then redeploy the things so, so i'm just uh, asking uh, if if it is feasible here or what what should we do okay uh, like are you done with your question yes 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 i'm done okay yeah so i, I got your question so when we develop a code there are different stuff okay from a developer perspective he define a functionality as a standalone model he he, he call it as a function okay first thing is there are different methodology one is test driven methodology or uh, development driven methodology okay so in test driven methodology first he will write a test case and then he do the development activity and in other way around so people do a development first and then write, they will write a unit test so unit test will cover different test case that could be applicable for a function how the function is going to behave in different instance uh, say for example first thing is the app should not crash for any reason because of that functionality whatever input whatever uh, whatever boundary input that uh, we are trying to you know inject right so second thing is uh, if we are trying to call that function from multi-threaded environment, how it is going to behave, right? And how uh, the inter-process stuff will happen when we are in a thread. So this is from a developer perspective. So the, the, the responsibility of a developer to write unit test, which will cover most of the scenarios from boundary condition, from multi-testing, and how... Uh, the uh, particular functionality will behave when we try to access the same method from different instances okay so that will be done as part of development using unit testing okay that is one part the second part is when a develop when a tester when a QA, qa person there are two things again manual and uh, automation so the manual team will do a manual testing where they, they have defined a test case which have functional end-to-end -end flow. And again, the automation team will write automation script which will cover the functional flows as well as the regression flows, okay, for the application as well as for the database. So for each and every area, the responsible person need to write the corresponding scripts that is one part okay and the second part is there are uh, some testing that can happen when we are doing uh, etl testing on a database or when we are trying to uh, do uh, you know uh, too many transactions in a table at an instance how it is going to behave so this kind of transactional testing on the database for that we will again have a developer unit testing and there are certain uh, third party tools and uh, platforms that are available in the market that we can integrate into our uh, Jenkins tool where we can validate the performance. Okay, so there are different areas where we can check uh, the performance and the functionality of the particular uh, unit. Does that answer your question? Yeah, can you give an example of such tool, actional tool that we can integrate to Jenkins to, to do the performance testing? So one quick example I can give for now is I don't want to get more in detail because anyhow we are going to talk about that. So one is uh, monkey testing, uh, DB test tool. So these are uh, some of the tools that through which we can do functional monkey testing and the DB performance testing. Clear? Yeah, yeah, clear, yeah, yeah. Any questions? So we can do the integration testing also, no? Integration meaning, uh, suppose the, there are multiple applications involved and if I'm introducing a change in one application, which is sending data to other applications uh, based on that, I mean, whatever I'm, I'm this change. So, <coughs> the new chain that I introduced should not impact the integration with, with 
with other uh, other applications so even that is taken care of in jenkins i mean that See, is tested as the i think you are talking about uh, system integration testing right correct correct yeah, system integration yes so first we start with uh, like individual uh, system level testing and then we will talk about system integration testing see when we talk about uh, there there are a lot of stuff that we need to discuss we, will, we are going to discuss uh, okay, like okay. yeah because i don't want to get everything at one time and uh, uh, to like no no i just wanted to know whether it is possible or feasible or not i don't want to know like how it is done but just wanted to know like devops covers covers that that framework covers that that's all so i got my answer so thank you yes yes and one more thing i want to specify here is we are having a limited duration with the uh, well defined models so if you are really interested in any specific topic i am more happy to explain uh, okay but that would not be part of the program okay because devops is a vast syllabus so we have you know key areas that is must to cover and some of the areas that may not be covered but if you are really interested we can discuss about that in a high level and i can help you offline more in detail okay 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 yeah, thank you okay so any questions from model 1 model 2 and model 3 see if i am going to rub the board shall we move on Guys, I'm good. Say, thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm so good too. Thank you. Not, uh, again, <laughs> this online program, so we don't know uh, whether you got it or not. That's fine. So again, so we talked about three models. Hello. Uh, is it a question? Yeah. Yes. Hi. Uh, see, next time could you please prepare some PPTs and can you please present other than typing everything? i have a, a ppt of uh, 100 pages i can quickly walk through but this is more about which is not a part of the uh, you know ppt i do have a ppt i'm going to talk about the okay, ppt okay yeah no, i'm see, going to you're typing like I, i'm not able to listen your voice clearly so that's why i'm asking you that's it yeah yeah i have mm -hmm. a ppt yeah we have a ppt we are going to talk about the ppt but parallelly we are mm -hmm. going to use whiteboard so wherever we, like things are required like that Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So next, we are going to talk about model four. Guys, uh, understand one thing very clearly. This is just an introduction. Okay. I'm just covering the overall roadmap. Don't take uh, this is uh, you know a kind of a specific model or something. This is just to give an overall insight. What is the program? What we are going to discuss? What we are? What all the stuff that we are going to cover? That's what we are discussing now. Okay. so model 4 in model 4 uh we are going to talk about sorry in model 4 we are going to talk about so we talked about uh, source code management in model 2 we talked about jenkins in model 3 and model 4 we will be talking about uh continuous uh, sorry not cont continuous configuration management tool so okay so this is very important topic as part of uh, devops is uh, considered so configuration management tool so in configuration management tool so in the previous uh, sdlc methodologies like we have uh, agile and we have waterfall right in that we are focusing more on business and development perspective there are actually uh, three layers okay one is uh, business and then uh, dev team
and then ITD. So business, it could be a different people's combined together for running the business. Okay. So the place from like we have field associate who get the business requirement and that will be converted into a business uh, specification from a business analyst. And then we have stakeholders and leadership team and they will see which one is highly prioritized and which one need to be delivered at first. So this stuff will come under the business and the dev team will focus on uh, delivering the uh, business specification into a uh, app driven okay and then it team is responsible for deploying the app in the infrastructure so that the application is up and running for 24 bus 7 so these are the different teams involved in it right so in agile methodology we are we call the overall methodology itself as a <coughs> IT, IT agility. Okay. It's not you want uh, to add QA team also business dev team, QA team and then deployment team. Uh, okay. So when we call dev team, don't take like it's a pure development team. We, uh, when we call dev team, it involves tech. I can say tech team instead of dev team. So I can say tech team. Then we'll talk about everyone. IT also technical, just uh, development team in the sense, what are all the dependencies we have with development? So first we will do a development and we will do a testing. This two will come under the tech team. Uh, we can say dev team. Okay. So dev plus architect plus QA. When I'm talking about QA, it include both manual and automation. Okay. And then IT team, they manage infrastructure systems and network. Okay. So in Agile, we are following business agility. When we call business agility, the whole uh, team is driven by business. So whatever requirement we got from business, we try to deliver. We don't think about the IT, meaning the infrastructure, but infrastructure plays a major role in terms of uh, the scalability and the availability of the application, right? So in Agile methodology, the whole thing is focused on business oriented. Okay. We are not focusing more on IDT, right? And, and uh, with the DevOps, we are trying to fill in the gap that we have with infrastructure team, meaning the IT team. When I'm talking about IT team, it not only system and networking, it also includes customer support and then ticket management team and then customer care. So everything will come under the IT team. Okay. We call it as infrastructure. Okay. Front desk, everything. Okay. So when we are uh, talking about the infrastructure right now, we are making the infrastructure through a manual process, right? Uh, sorry, manual process. So how we can make uh, our uh, infrastructure as an automated. So one thing I can say in DevOps, one of the thumb rule is in DevOps is automated process. Everything should be in an automated way. No manual interruption should be there. Okay. So in a traditional approach, the IT, meaning the infrastructure, meaning the systems and networks are configured and managed manually. How we can make it an automated way of defining the infrastructure. That's how we uh, end up with DevOps. Okay. So, in configuration management tool, we are going to focus how we can make the infrastructure as an automated process. Okay. How we can de define, how we can manage, how we can update the infrastructure in an automated way. So that's how we got a technology called as infra 
structure as code. Okay. So with this, we are going to write a program. So using that program, we are going to build the infrastructure through an automated process. Okay. So we can implement infrastructure as code through different platforms. Okay. So we have Chef. We have Ansible. Ansible. We we have Puppet. Uh, we have uh, Salslack. Okay, so these are the different platforms through which we can enable infrastructure as a code through which we can make the whole infrastructure in automated process. Here yeah. and in our program, we are going to talk about Ansible as a key component. Okay, so in our program, we are going to uh, focus on Ansible, which is a configuration management tool through which we can make the infrastructure as an automated uh, process, uh, which enable infrastructure as a code. Okay, so that is the model four. Any questions on model four? Uh, hi, uh, this is Lashmi here, Lashmi Ganesh. Just one question. Uh -huh. Infrastructure, suppose if we need more servers, I mean more hardware uh, uh, for any project. So the current, uh, the current infrastructure does not uh, support the volume of uh, the growth. You just, I mean, you just volume, growth of you just volume. So to add the additional servers or additional hardware things, hardware, I'm talking about hardware servers and equipment, mm -hmm. how can that be, I mean, automation, automating that infrastructure at hardware level, is that possible here using this Ansible or is it, is that, is it still done manually because that is, that requires someone go on, some, I mean, that some manual intervention, isn't it? Uh, or even that also happens automatically. Yeah, so buying physical machine is still, uh, you know, physical process because uh, that is not automated yet because still you need a physical machine, right? So there are two right. things. Uh, right now the company may, there are two things are available. One is company can set up their own uh, household environment. Uh, they can uh, set up their uh, data centers. They can set up their, uh, uh, own uh, environment where they have clusters of nodes, clusters of uh, hardware. Okay, when we are talking about uh, automation, how we are going to build a node on top of the hardware? Because when you buy hardware, that's just a hardware that will not work as it is, right? So you need to install uh, operating system on top of that. You need to install the software on top of that. You need to deploy the application and then you need to deploy the network and then you need to connect that to your domain. So there are a lot of dependent uh, stuff that we need to configure before we access the uh, application and make it available for the customer, right? So we are talking about the automation process in building the hardware, uh, meaning software on top of the hardware, like uh, installing the operating system, configuring the DNS, DHCP, and deploying the application. So we are talking about automating those process. Is that answer to your question? Lakshmi, uh, are you there? Uh, 
Okay, let's move on. Uh, any other questions from model four? Guys, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Uh, guys, please be uh, respond. Like uh, I would assume that no one is available. If you're not responding and if you're not saying yes or no, I would assume that no one is available. Okay. So please say yes or no. Okay. That will give at least you are still there and you are able to hear me. Okay. Let's move on. Next one is model five. In model five, we are going to talk about containerization. I think most of you heard about virtualization. So one of the key uh, announcement that we saw in the last uh, few years is uh, containerization. Okay. So containerization is more about uh, how many of you um, heard about or how many of you have uh, worked on virtualization. Anyone has experience in virtualization or any idea on virtualization? Uh, no, like see, we don't have any uh, experience. Like we are freshers actually. Like me and Kannababu, like we both are freshers here. Yeah, we don't have any experience. Okay, so do you have any idea or did you came across the topic or the concept of uh, virtualization? No. Okay. So this question is more about how I can explain it. Do I need to explain the fundamental? That's why I asked this question. It's not a mandatory, you should be aware of this. I'm just trying to understand, okay? okay. So virtualization. Uh, so say for example, if I uh, have a different type of applications, okay? So each, say for example, I have three applications. One application requires Windows, one application requires Red Hat, one application requires Mac. So what I will do? I need to get three system, right? And I can deploy all these three application in three different host machine, which has uh, independent softwares and operating system, correct? So if I do that, what happens is, so I need to spend money for uh, each and every machine. Say for example, for one machine, if I spend, I'm just giving an assumption, okay? Uh, $5,000. So for three, three machines, I will need to spend $15,000, right? So now, in this, we may not utilize all the uh, RAM, memory, hard disk, right? So in that case, how we can effectively utilize the resources? So what we are going to do is, I'm going to buy one higher end system, which what's, uh, say for example, $10,000, or yeah let's say ten thousand dollar in that i can define a virtualization in which i can have all the three host machine in single system with this I can reduce $5,000 in terms of uh, the machine cost and uh, we have one machine in that we have in, we have hosted all the three uh, independent hosts and we, we, we may have only one resource instead of three resources to manage three hosts. Okay, so virtualization is a mechanism in which we can install heterogeneous operating system in one host one physical host that way we can efficiently utilize the resource and uh, like manage and monitor the whole host from one single machine clear any questions i'm just giving a high level insight i'm not going in detail any questions on virtualization so oh. we'll be we'll be having one machine in that machine, we will be having three, uh, what do you say, uh, three heterogeneous operating system running on it with the help of virtualization. 
Clear? Any questions? Okay. Containerization. So, containerization is uh, enhancement from virtualization. Okay. So, in containerization, what we are going to do is we are going to define a container which contains each and every component that is required for application, starting from a host, operating system, software, services. So whatever we needed, everything will be self-contained in the containers. And we can spin it up anywhere and it will automatically scale up and scale down based on the uh, requirement and based on the load we have for the host. Okay, so containerization is more about uh, making one single container in which we have everything that is required for the application. Hardware, uh, sorry, not hardware, uh, software, and then application and dependent soft, uh, services. So everything is configured and defined in that container so that you can spin up the container anywhere. You can spin up the container in a physical system or you can spin up the container in a cloud. Clear? Any questions? So we can implement containerization through different uh, tools. So we have uh, Cloud Foundry. We have Rocket. And then uh, the last one that we are going to discuss here is Docker. So in our program, we are going to implement the containerization using Docker. Okay, any questions? Okay, let's move on to the next topic, which is model six. In model six, we are going to talk about Continuous monitoring. So when you are talking about monitoring, so we are going to monitor each and every component in, in our uh, infrastructure, like system, network, application, database, everything. So we are going to monitor each and every network, meaning have printer and then routers, and then switches. So each and every component in the infrastructure will be monitored continuously so that we can see the healthiness and the scalability and the availability of the application. Clear? So for that, we have uh, different tools. We have uh, App Dynamics. We have Navias. So in our program, we are going to use Navias for continuous monitoring. So with Nagas, we can monitor uh, the whole infrastructure. So we can have a greater visibility and we can able to monitor the end-to-end -end infrastructure components. Clear? Any questions? So these are all the uh, different models that we have in our program. Uh, so we talked about the duration, we talked about different models that we have in our program. So this is our overall uh, roadmap of this program. <coughs> going forward, we are going to uh, talk about each and every model in detail. So that way, you will have a clarity on the, uh, like, you know, how we are going to move forward and what are the topics that we are going to cover. and. Uh, you'll get a general uh, information, what is DevOps and what are the components, right? Any questions? Uh, what about continuous deployment? Is it, which module covers that, that topic? Uh, continuous deployment will be covered in uh, Jenkins. I uh, remember that I have specified that in Jenkins. Oh, and Jenkins, okay. okay. So we talked about- for right I thought that is for actually continuous integration, I thought, okay, that actually, that actually includes deployment also. 
Yeah, so we talked about continuous integration. Uh, for that, we are going to use uh, Jenkins or Bamboo or TeamCity, right? So in yeah. that, we talked about uh, automation testing, unit testing, and then we talked about creating jobs, and then we talked about uh, code quality and automated deployment. Oh, yeah, correct, correct. Right? Yeah. So there are seven modules or uh, six modules? Sorry? Okay, yeah, carry on. Now, you said seven modules. Right, right. In seven modules, what happens is, in the uh, program, they have diff they have uh, splitted uh, Jenkins and Maven into two different, right? So I merged these two into one because this is part of the Jenkins because we are going to cover uh, the build automation tool, like uh, the Maven and uh, how we can do a build automation, how to manage dependencies. So everything will be covered under the continuous integration. So that's why uh, you may get seven models when you look into the uh, you know uh, the syllabus, but we are going to cover the build automation as part of continuous integration using Jenkins. What automation you said? Build automation? Build automation tool. Oh, okay. So we have Ant, we have Maven, we have uh, uh, Gradle, right? So these are, you know, build management tools. So that would be covered under Jenkins. Clear? You said Maven, right? Yes, so Maven, Gradle, and all those stuff will come under uh, Build Automation Tool. And which one are we going to discuss about? I mean, in due course, is it Maven? Uh, yeah, we'll be focused more on Maven, but I will cover a uh, high-level insight on Ant as well as Gradle. High-level on Ant. Ant, you said the yeah, Ant, right? Yes, Ant. Okay. okay. Any questions from the uh, program roadmap? <clears throat>